Hi, my name is Lewis with Rossman Repair Group, Mac Laptop Repair Specialist, and today I'd like to discuss some of my thoughts on the recession along with some of my own experiences, and some of it relating to how foreigners may handle the recession versus how an American will handle the recession. And again, some of it was my experience and some of it will be my experience with other people. Now, one of the great differences I've noticed is between foreigners and Americans is that Americans a very hard set on doing exactly what it is they set out to do with their life. So if an American goes to school for, let's say, computer engineering or networking or a field, any field like that, or what I would consider a smart job, they want to work within their particular field. So let's, let's say somebody graduates from there and now they're working as a low-level technician or over the phone customer service technician at Optimum Online or Cablevision, troubleshooting people's issues with their internet connection. They may not want to take another opportunity to make money in a different field because they really, really need to work in their field. That's part of, that's ingrained in their head that they need to work in their field because they want to work their way up the ladder and get themselves a job in this particular field, even if, due to the recession, this is just not a way to make money. Now, if, what a foreigner may do, they may have hopes and dreams, but they may start doing something. Let's, let's take a stereotype, a cultural stereotype in New York. A Mexican that is going to mow a lawn. And which a lot of people will make fun of. And here's why they're stupid. Let's say this Mexican mows the lawn, and after about a couple of months of doing it, some people within the landscaping company quit, and somebody tells him, you know what, this would be a good time for you to become a manager. And he goes, huh, maybe it'll do me, and maybe I'll learn how to do that. And a couple of months later, he becomes a manager, and he's driving people to the sites, telling them what to do, and dealing with the customer. Now, let's say... Somebody says, you know, what you should do since you already kind of know these guys, maybe you should have, maybe you should go and try to mow somebody else's lawn. Maybe see if you can get any of your own customers. Uh, you, you know how it's done from watching any of them do it and from doing it yourself. Why don't you try to get your own customers? He goes, hmm, try doing that. And they say, well, since you already manage these people and they already respect you, why don't you ask upon their own time? if they may do some jobs for you. This way you won't even have to go to these places and you can do two of them at once and make more money. And he goes, hmm, yeah, I'll do that. Then maybe you start your own landscaping business because you're looking at the profits that your boss is making off of the work that you and the workers are doing and think, this is very profitable. And you go, the guy goes, hmm, let me try that. And let's say he starts this business and it's successful. And then somebody says, well, the place that does our lawn in our neighborhood sucks. They cut the grass too short, they always roll over our plants, and they charge too much money. And you think, hmm, let me, let me see if I can get uh, hire somebody who may be able to drive out to that area. And you hire somebody who, maybe not drive out to that area, but somebody that may be able to work in that particular area. Maybe you start a franchise doing this. There was a guy in Staten Island that I got to meet about two years ago. He, was in a, he lived in a home that was appraised at over $750,000. And about six years prior, six, seven years prior to that, he was a Mexican immigrant who came to this country and mowed lawns and made no money. And one of the neighbors, while I was on the way to this house, I was on the way to this house to fix his computer, this is, told me, I oh, yes, I know that guy because he mowed my lawn about five or six years ago and when he worked for another company. That he's not doing some sort of genius work and he's not even living his dream, but he lives in a home that's worth almost $1 million off of this small business that he started. And he started it by simply following the money every step of the way. Instead of saying, I only want to do this. Let's say he came here because he wanted to you know, start a pizzeria or something. Or maybe he wanted to be a musician. Whatever he wanted to do, he followed the money. And because he followed the money every step of the way, without any inhibitions, he was able to get, in the middle of a recession, a great job, start a great business, and own an amazing home. Whereas the American guy is just sitting there going, yeah, you know... I really want to get a job doing that. You know, don't worry, I'm pretty sure in 2013 things will be better, and I'll be able to get a job in networking, yeah. Maybe I'll finish my CCNA, and by then, you know, with any luck, hopefully I can, you know, maybe when the economy gets better. You know what I think of it? When the economy gets better, bullshit. I think it's just that. I think it's bullshit that cowards use when they are afraid to try and go for a real job, when they're afraid to get out of the little rut that they're comfortable in. Whereas this guy, who came here with no money from a different country and knew very little of the language, was able to afford almost a $1 million home in a couple of years because he took risks and his pride didn't keep him from following the money. Because again, if you
if you have a very low level of job in the field in which you work, you're honestly you're probably not that far above the lawnmower and you know in the food chain.